Okay, so I wanted to read you this chapter on what's trauma got to do with it. So there are many definitions for trauma, but one that stands out comes from Dr. Bessel van der Kolk. The author of The Body Keeps Score, Brain, Mind, and Body, and The Healing of Trauma. Van der Kolk is a pioneering researcher in the field of trauma studies. As we define the scope of trauma, he writes, Trauma is not just an event that took place sometimes in the past. It is also the imprint left by the experiences on mind, body, and brain. This imprint has ongoing consequences for how the human manages to survive. And then I'm going to read on a little bit. Trauma can be present in our daily lives. The deaths of loved ones, job losses, divorces, and public disasters. Turning the page. Can all be experienced as traumatic. Trauma can also happen from an event in the past. Sexual abuses, illnesses, and losses of close relatives can contribute to the trauma-induced cognitive imprint that impairs our functioning. And as if our personal existences were not complicated enough, as black folks which I'm black, and anyone who's reading this who's black or who wants to understand the black experience more. We can be traumatically affected by the experience of historical racism. We call this the trauma of being black in the United States. Being traumatized influences the way we react to the ordinary, unusual challenges in our lives. When we experience something unpleasant or uninvited, we can become angry, frustrated, or scary. You may worry about how to handle such a number of circumstances. We might blame others for our mistakes. Many of us struggle with constant anxiety, which affects sleep and memory, causes high blood pressure, and depress our mood, which can lead to troubling behaviors. When we experience something unpleasant or uninvited, we are often actually responding to the memory of old traumas. But our response to the situation or circumstance at hand can be inappropriate, leaving us and others confused. So I'm reading this book, and I'm really, really into this book. Um, and it's the chapter that I'm on now, or the part that I'm on now, is, um, you know, what does trauma have to do with it? And I'm always talking about trauma, 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 because it is so important, because it's an imprint in our mind. And the book is called Black and Buddhist, so I, I understand that some people might shy away from this if you're not black or you're not... Um, wanting to be aware of the black experience, which is a very real thing, but I want to talk about two things. Trauma generally and trauma as a black person. So trauma is something that is left in your brain. And if you don't deal with it, it's so deeply imprinted in your subconscious mind that if you don't deal with your trauma, it will affect your life and it will manifest in different ways um, because the fact that your thoughts control everything that you do. Now being black and traumatized in America specifically, and that's the experience I'm talking about, and that's the experience the book is talking about, being black in America comes with a different set of trauma because of historical racism, because of all of the past, the, all of the barriers that have been put in front of black people. There's all this trauma that is in your brain automatically if you have a barrier in front of you. For example... I watch a lot of children, right? And I also have a social work background and I've studied a lot and all that. But if you are a child and you have a barrier in front of you, but you can't explain what it is, you are going to get older and you're going to be stuck for some reason because of the fact that you experienced something in your childhood that told you, okay, well, I can't go any further because of this. And then that's why you have to usually go into therapy to figure out what that block or that barrier is. Or go into hypnotic therapy, um, hypnosis, or cognitive behavioral therapy, exposure therapy, like figuring out what those different things, dialectic, like figuring out what those different um, modes can be used to help for you to trigger you know, your brain or to go into your subconscious thoughts. So if you're black in this country, and maybe you haven't experienced direct racism, but you have seen people that look like you, or family members, or people around you experiencing racism, you know, or knowing that there's a barrier in front of you and you can't explain, there is going to be some sort of trauma, an imprint left in your brain, like a child, where you're going to have to be like, okay, why do I feel like I can't have this? This is not for all black people, but for many, especially in America, why can't I have this? Why do I have to think about, like, when I drive? You know, am I going to get pulled over? Is my family going to get killed? You know, if I tell someone I'm black, am I going to face racism? All these different things, these different traumas that you have, that many black people face. And, of course, there are other minorities and, and other people. But I want to talk specifically about black people because I, I do feel that it's one of the, if not the most oppressed um, identity. And I don't like to say race because it's a social construct. But um, people of African descent are one of the most oppressed people, and I, and I do believe in others as well. But of course, my experiences of a black person, and my family's black, um, 
But I want to say that this is something that a lot of black people are super traumatized because of this unconscious um, imprint in their brain that has told them that they are not allowed to have certain things, that something's going to happen to their family. With the constant m news and media showing black people as um, inferior or, expo or when they're exposed to something that they're seen in a, in a negative light. And if you literally just take a day and you jot, and this is changing because now people are being more aware of intentionally putting black people in the media in a good way um but if you go back maybe two years not even that long ago maybe two years ago and you just look at the news and you write down everything you see about black people it's usually in a negative context and then you look at other races or identities um especially whites you will see that they're putting in they're in a better context and that's intentional and so that trauma affects black people because of the fact that they are um dealing with this imprint of okay well all these different things are against me and all these barriers and maybe i can't explain them but i need to figure out a way to deconstruct them in my brain so that's what the trauma is especially for black people and this book is really helping me because the practitioners in here the buddhist practitioners because buddhism is not a religion it's a way of life it's a way of leading a life through compassion it's not a religion you can literally be you know, Christian and Buddhist or uh, Muslim and Buddhist or, you know, not even religious in any way because it's, it's a path. Buddha did not say um, that I'm creating a religion. He's He was awakened to a better way out of being in a place of... Um, being in a place where he was, in a, he was a noble and he basically had rights, a bigger, a richer class, and he saw people that were oppressed and that were poor, and he was like, okay, I have to find a way to balance my life with theirs and so that's why buddhism is a way it's not like a religion it's a way and i honestly think that religious paths should be a way more than just a like okay for example i consider myself to be a christian buddhist because i don't believe in everything in christianity but i like the way of buddhism but i also consider myself just a buddhist because i'm like well, I like this way the most of all of them, and I'm not super religious. But going back to, to being black, and I know I'm, I went on a tangent there for a second, and, and going back to trauma, because I talk about trauma as something that's imprinted in your brain that all of, that affects all of us, because there are unconscious things that we all deal with, and there are barriers that all of us have dealt with, like the book Black and Buddhist by um, uh, Pamela Aoyotunde and Cheryl L. A. Giles. Um, it's honestly one of the best books I've read in a really long time. Um, talks about trauma. And then there's a way that we talk about trauma for black people specifically um, in terms of the barriers that we have faced. And so one of the things that we have to do is find a way to balance leading a life of compassion and dealing with our trauma because of the fact that, like yesterday, I made a video that talked about how if we have these negative thoughts in our brain and affects our consciousness so how do we navigate this life of trauma and racism and discrimination we have to literally become awake we have that's what like the buddhist way is becoming awake becoming the awakened one so how do we become awake we acknowledge all of our trauma we literally go into meditation and right intention right view and all these different things to to um dismantle these thoughts and then we look at the world of racism and discrimination, all these things, and we fight against it with love and compassion, um, understanding that that's the only way and that violence is not the way to... Because violence is... Obviously, violence is not the way because it's it hasn't helped anything. But I do... But I understand the psychology of, of people rioting and all that stuff because if you put someone in a corner long enough and you keep poking at them like this, eventually they're going to push you back and they're going to be like wait, you've been pushing me this whole time and now I can push you back? Okay. And also you can't expect someone or a group of people to be oppressed forever, mentally especially, and to not react. Because it's like, if you have, if, if someone is, for example, if you're studying for so long, this is not, this is an analogy that doesn't express the magnitude, but it's just a good analogy, I think. If you're studying for a really long time, you've never had a break, eventually you're going to crack. And that's what happens. So to many black people, they have cracked because of the fact that they're like, I'm tired of this shit. So this book is really helping me to center my thoughts and it's helping me to understand trauma. Um, and when I get to another part that I like, I'll read it for you. Have a great day. Be with love and compassion.